Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is a video on uh, nettles, fro growing frogs, and weed mulch. Okay, the nettles. I uh, started, I bought some seeds, uh, nettle seeds, last spring. I started them in pots. I germinated the nettle and I put them out here. And um, this year they survived winter and they, uh, <laughs> they just bursted out in spring. And right now I'm eating a lot of nettles and they're delicious. They're dark green, they're really good. They're tasty and they're also very nutritious. Just wanted to show uh, in spring what the nettle looks like around here in the, uh, the deep south. So, and this is all like was one plant, one seed, <laughs> one plant the uh, following spring. And they, um, now they're everywhere in the garden. Um, so it's a very easy plant to uh, to grow if, and it's a perennial, right? So it's just so much less, less work. I actually don't mind the sting that much um, because I don't like purposely try to get stungs that much but I respect it. Uh, for me the fact that it stings like that is uh, an indication that it's probably a very uh, very powerful plant and that it's kind of like warning you to uh, be mindful about what you do with it. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk about growing frogs. Um, this is some chamomile, and look at that. The ladybugs are uh, seem to be enjoying it. The chamomile survived tough and um, it it bursted out as soon as spring uh, sprung <laughs> it sprung with spring so let me take a second here and uh, if you look in my other, if you watch my other videos, you'll see that I um, started this garden like uh, three years ago with wood chips. And um, here's a bed here. Now, of course, the wind picked up because I'm I'm recording. <laughs> I'm gonna go here in this little uh, shaded area. So. What I wanted to talk to say here about the frogs is that when you uh, use ramule chip wood, which is just small, the small branches of the deciduous trees that is that are, that you uh, chip uh, cut into little pieces. Well, what happens is there's a fungi that grows uh, Basiomycetes. And it makes like a stringy, like it's a white stringy kind of a fungus. And it uh, breaks down the wood components and frees the energy and the uh, the carbon and whatever like materials to other species that could thrive. One of the things that happens is there's a lot of beetles that appear. And the beetles um, are like the termites they um, quote 
eat wood, but um, <coughs> I did some research on that and they actually, well, how could I put this? They don't actually eat wood, they cut the wood into small pieces and then they swallow the, those small pieces of wood and then inside of their guts there's protites. There are some microorganisms that break down the wood um, into and um, form amino acids which is becomes the new the nutrition from the wood and you see what's what's fascinating in that little story here is that it's now very fashionable to talk about gut bacteria and uh, probiotics for human health and um, I found it to be very interesting that even the, the beetles here in the garden are actually they actually have their own version of probiotics in their guts these protites and these bacteria that work together if you look at a protite on the surface of the protite it's like colonized by all sorts of bacteria so they're wor you know that they're working together and they're on the the bacteria and the protite are working together and they're all they are inside of the gut of the uh, beetles and the beetles are eating the wood uh, the the mycelium of the fungi that is decomposing the ramule chipped wood so there's a trophic cascade here there's a cascade of uh, events that follow the application of the um, wood chips on um, in, on the soil and um, what happened here in the garden is that there was a lot of beetles I literally I wish I wish you could all have seen when I was like maybe a year after the wood chips like um, I would come and uh, if I would move the soil around you know like it move the wood chips uh, the mulch on I it, it would be creeping it was almost like the soil was moving you know like some sort of hallucination and it was just full of these small beetles and anyways um, what I'm trying to where, where I'm getting at is that following the beetles um, were three years down the road this year's the first year that almost every time I go in the garden and I and I do something in the soil a frog pops out and there's there's all these holes everywhere and these frogs they make they make a hole and they uh, and they kind of sleep in there and they reside in that hole and they just they come out to eat the insects now I'm not saying and I don't know enough about that frog to say that it's eating those beetles but what I'm saying is that it goes from wood chips to fungi to beetles to frogs it's a natural progression of a uh, this <laughs> this form of uh, of gardening or soil or growing soil or aggregating soil <laughs> and um, it's gotten to the point where I have to be very mindful about what I do because I mean I don't want to like uh, injure a frog or kill a frog so I can't just put a pitchfork in the ground and turn some ground some soil over chances are I'm gonna poke a frog or something so and um, and when I started here gardening here there there was no frogs you know like so that's why I'm like I'm saying like and you know I'm being facetious it's like kind of being funny I'm saying that 
I'm now growing frogs. So, yeah, I'm a frog grower. <laughs> and I like frogs. I mean, they're so zen and they're so, I mean, they're, they're not fearful. And uh, I think it's a blessing. I mean, people talk about worms. They say, oh, if you got all these earthworms in your garden, you got a fertile soil. Now that's when you're using the bacterial composting, the compost, organic compost, bacterial or manure kind of an approach. If you're using the wood chip approach, okay, see this is a uh, some uh, some of the de decaying wood chips. If you're using the wood chip approach, then uh, you're not looking for earthworms per se, although there are some. You're you're looking for frogs. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Now, other topic. Weeds. Uh, what people call weeds. Um, I do a lot of uh, videos on why I think uh, they're not really weeds, they're beautiful plants, but last year he, I grew here basil and I'm preparing uh, to grow some more basil. Now what you're seeing here is this, the mulch that I have right now is rather than buying hay, I'm using the weeds quote and see this is what it looks like following winter in this row and yes these are basil were my basil plants and I let them seed in here all over um, and so this is called chickweed okay Let's see if I could do a little close-up now chickweed is food uh, and is also a medicinal herb if you look up on it chickweed it's you'll see and uh, so for we eat a lot of chickweed um, it's very delicate it, it doesn't taste very strong it's not bitter at all and um, I just harvest it and I um, put it in my stir fry. I chop it up and I put it in my stir fry. And um, and there's so much growing here, it's unbelievable. Now this patch is now a uh, flower, flowering chickweed. So it's all like in the flowering stage. Um, so what I don't want, well, it's not that I don't want. It's, I think now's a good time to use the chickweed as mulch. If I let it grow more, it'll be, it'll seed. And then um, I'm, I'm basically going to be growing more chickweed, which is okay, but, but not here. And plus there's so much chickweed all over this place. Um, I don't really need to be growing it anymore. It's just so abundant. Uh, now, this is what it would look like if I was to do the the regular uh, spring weeding of a garden of my of my bed. Now, what what now what happens when you do this is first of all the sun bakes the top layer and it uh, sterilizes and kills all the uh, the life. Light, uh, gardening and soil fertility is about life. So, um, oh, there's some ants in here. <laughs> um, so, what? What? Uh, if you don't put mulch, the first layers of the soil is mulch. I remember reading that somewhere. Someone said you're always mulching, even when you don't mulch. You're using. If you don't, <laughs> if you don't mulch, you're basically using the top layer of soil as mulch. So you're still mulching. So, um, now the thing, if I let this like this, it's going to dry out. The top is going to, top layer is going to dry out. And then, 
uh, all the seeds that are in here when it rains are going to germinate and I'm going to be back to square one and it's going to be back to looking like this in no time flat. If I, if I, if I um, take this chickweed and I, I prepare it like this here, right? It's like this big mat now and I could basically put it on my bed as mulch, you see, like this here. This will prevent um, the drying out of the first layer, but it will decay also, and it will provide nutrients. And under, under this here, if I let this here for a week, and then it rains, and I lift this up, it's going to be crawling full of beetles and frogs and stuff in there. Now, if I want... Right now, I let the basil seed itself. So what I'm doing, essentially, and I know tomorrow... It's supposed to rain like uh, a lot, like 20 inches, I think. That, or no, not 20 inches, uh, two inches. Or th I don't, I don't really quite remember exactly. But it, the, a lot of rains come in our way. So the, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of like making a small little area in the middle of this here. See, like a lane. And I'm going to let this water, this rain, soak into this here, and just to soak this ground real good. Then I'm going to come back after the rain episode and I'm going to put this here and maybe leave a crack here, or just a small tiny one inch crack in the middle. Just so that if some of the seeds of the basil would want to germinate and pop their heads out, I could kind of see what's going on. And then I could kind of like remove a little bit, uh, uh, move this mulch and let those, those plants come through. If none of the basil seeds to germinate, it doesn't matter um, because there's just going to be a small like little lane in the middle where some of the seeds of the quote weeds will germinate and I, sh I, I might need to, uh, to tend to. But um, and this, uh, this um, chickweed is, uh, is actually very, very full, of, like full of nitrogen and nutrients. So, I mean, it's... Uh, it's a blessing, like, it's a blessing to have this chickweed as food, as, uh, they say it's a blood purifier, like it's a tonic, um, but it's also a blessing to have uh, as a mulch, okay? So, that's why I said um, this video is also called, Let Thy Weeds Be Thy Mulch. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just wanted to show this here what a technique like that you could be using in your garden You don't have to spend money buying mulch. You don't need to buy hay and um, you could use the quote weeds again Very beautiful useful plants So that's it. All right, folks. I hope you're gonna have a nice growing season this year and I hope you're going to have to build continue building a uh, relationship with the plants and that all of this is going to lead to your health your mental emotional physical and spiritual health it's, it's all linked everything is linked okay bye bye oh uh, I was uh, continuing what I was doing here and I wanted to show you I um, I was taking preparing this mulch and I saw the hole this hole over here. I was like, I wonder if there's not a frog in there. And uh, I thought we would do this together. We could like see Mr. Froggy or Mrs. Froggy in here together. Now right now it it thinks Froggy thinks I better not move. It didn't see me. <laughs> okay, but we did see. So let's see it. It's going to pop up. And it's going to show itself to us. Now, this is what they do. They go, they bury themselves in in, in, a, in a hole. That's why you can't just like go with your trowel or you go boom. You just, you'll kill that froggy. So I'll try not to move too much as I, uh, as we look at this frog come out. Okay, hey Froggy, you want to show us your face? Show people what you look like. 
What do you look like? Huh? We saw you. You could come out. You could come out, Froggy. Come out. There's no worry. Yeah, we see you. We see you there. Perfect disguise, huh? Perfect disguise. It's like got this, those brown tones. Uh, and you can't see it well right now. Oh, it's puffing itself up. <laughs> see a rattlesnake come out. <laughs> it a rattlesnake comes out, it bites me. That would not be good. Okay, there it is. Mr. Frog, please, please, I know, like, I don't, this is not for frog cruelty. We are, we want to admire your, admire you. Huh? You're the, you're the sign, you're the uh, sign of the times, man. This is it, like ve vegan gardening. We love frogs. And we want to, we, people want to see what you look like. And we'll leave you alone after, I mean, Mr. Froggy Frog Frog. Come on, come on, there you are, there you are. <laughs> Oh, look at it. It's so cute. Okay, you don't need to go further than that froggy. This is not frog circus But uh Yeah There it is folks There's like all these frogs. They're everywhere, right? And I'm not kidding you like Oh, oh. Oh, little froggy. Woohoo, little froggy's afraid. Oh, you're puffing up, are you? Oh, little froggy. I'm, pet, I'm petting you. You don't need to be afraid of humans. Okay, let's see here. Can I just put you... I don't want to here. Oh, no, 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 you could stay. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, I don't want to disturb the frog anymore. It's like probably... Well, frogs are pretty zen, you know. They've been here for a long time, you know. And uh, this frog is happy. It's got lots of insects to eat. And there's no pesticides here. There's no herbicides here. There's only good love, you know. And uh, so... Oh, look, it just ate right in front of us. Oh, my God. <laughs> it just ate an insect. So, you know, it's not too traumatized. It's like... <laughs> okay, that was that was pretty cool. Okay, this is it. This is your bio biology class, folks. Growing frogs in the uh, wood chips. Okay. Now, now this is the end for of the video for real. <laughs> bye bye.